Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. This is my first video of 2023, so happy new year. I thought because we're at the beginning of the year, it'd be fun to start at the beginning of a sewing project. So today I'm gonna to share the five things you should do before you cut or print out your pattern. Let's dive right in. So first you're gonna to wanna to start off by having a pattern, either a printed pattern or a PDF, and then make sure you have your flexible measuring tape and somewhere to take notes. This could be a digital format or pen and paper. So the first thing you wanna do is measure yourself. Our bodies will change over time, so it is important to measure yourself often, even every time you sew a new project. It'll vary a little bit depending on what kind of garment you're making, but generally the most important measurements are going to be the chest, waist, and hips. When you take your measurements, wear pretty much nothing. I would just wear your underwear. You can use a mirror to help you make sure that you're holding the measuring tape straight. I also recommend if you're a person who wears a bra, wear the same bra that you're going to wear when you wear the garment. So if you're making a dress and you're going to wear a strapless bra, I would wear that bra when you take your measurements because as you know, the bra can really change the shape and size of the breasts. Now that you have your body measurements, you're going to want to find your size. And now it's totally normal, totally, totally normal to fit into multiple sizes. So you wanna find the size chart and that might be on the back of your pattern or if you have a PDF pattern, it'll be in the instruction booklet. And you wanna just find the column where your measurements fit best. One thing that I forgot to mention while recording is that not all pattern companies have the same size charts. So you really do need to look at them and choose the size based on the chart. Likewise, the sizes for sewing pattern companies are often really different than what you'll find in ready to wear. So you can't just go and choose the size that you would usually buy in the store. In short, you have to look at the size chart every single time because they're all different. Sometimes a pattern will recommend what measurement is most important when selecting your size. For example, with my Leela skirt pattern, I recommend selecting your size based on the hip measurement. For the skirt, you need to look at your hip and waist measurements, but for the Leela skirt design, the waist is cinched in using elastic and it's actually the same size as the hips. So for the most part with this pattern, you would choose the size that corresponds with your hip measurement. So make sure to really thoroughly read your pattern and see if it has recommendations on what measurement you should use to choose your size. If you're sewing a fitted garment that's fitted in a lot of different places, you can even grade between sizes. For example, if your hips are one size and your waist is in another size, you can grade between the two to get a custom fit. So now you have the size that best fits your body measurements. So step two, you wanna take a look at the finished measurements of the garment. So different garments are going to have different amount of ease. And the ease is the difference between the finished garment and your body measurements. If you're using an indie sewing pattern, usually your finished garment measurements are going to be in the pattern booklet near your size chart. But if you're using one of the standard big four patterns, finished garment measurements might not be in the instruction booklet, but they are usually on the pattern itself. So you'll need to unfold the tissue paper and look around and find where it's printed on there. If the finished garment measurements are not printed on the pattern or they're not in your instruction booklet, then you can use your measuring tape or ruler to measure the pattern and find those finished garment measurements. Just remember to remove the seam allowance from the measurements. Sometimes there will be positive ease, like my cardigan here has a lot of positive ease. It's bigger than my body. My turtleneck has negative ease because it's a little smaller than my body and then it stretches to fit after I put it on. Different patterns will be designed for different amounts of ease and that's really just the style of garments. Now, if you really like the style of the garment, I recommend going with the amount of ease that the designer intends for your size. So my Leela skirt, for example, I have six inches of ease at the hips in that garment. 
Now, if you want to match exactly to how it is on the pattern, you would choose a size that corresponds with your hips. Some people don't like that amount of ease and they might want a little less ease or a little more ease. In that case, you can make a smaller or a larger size. I would be a little bit careful if you're making a different size just because there are a lot of different factors that go into sizing. And if you want a garment that is very different than what the designer intended, you should maybe consider just using a different pattern. But going up or down one or two sizes is usually okay, especially if it's a loose fitting or more simple garment like the Leela skirt, which has an elastic waist. It's really a lot easier to fit something like that. Or if you're making something like my Lou box top, which has 10 inches of ease, you know, it's designed to be really oversized, but I know a lot of people will go down a size or two or three just to get a smaller fit. And that does change the style lines, but this is your garment. So you get to do what you want to do. So this talk about ease really rolls into the third thing. And the third thing you need to do is think about how much ease you want in your garment. And one really great way to figure this out is to look at existing garments in your closet that you like the fit of, or maybe garments you don't like the fit of. Then you can use your handy measuring tape to measure that finished garment and find out what size you want your finished garment to be. And again, that'll help you choose the size that you want to make for your garment. So now we're on to the fourth thing. You have taken your body measurements, you have the intended size that best fits those body measurements, and you found a similar garment in your closet that you like the fit of, and you have those finished measurements. So now you can compare all three. So you're gonna be taking into account your personal shape and then also your personal preference. And again, everyone is different, everybody's body is different, and what you prefer comfort and style wise is also personal. The fifth and final thing that I recommend doing before cutting out your pattern is to make any known pattern adjustments. Sometimes if I'm using a digital pattern, I will actually make these pattern adjustments on the computer using Illustrator. But if I'm tracing a printed pattern or cutting one out, I will also make some adjustments then. So for example, I often make a square shoulder adjustment. So I might just go ahead and cut the pattern to have that adjustment already done or cut to a longer length because I'm taller and I usually need to add length. If you've already sewn a pattern by a particular designer before, it's a really good idea to keep notes on what adjustments you made because you can often apply those same adjustments to other patterns and you're gonna get to a good fit faster. And of course, I always recommend making a muslin before cutting into your precious fabric. To be honest, I don't always make a muslin and I often regret it. So please, please, please make a muslin, test the fit out, see how you like it. Another really good idea is to make a muslin using fabric that's similar to what you're gonna make your garment with. So you can use actual muslin fabric, but if your garment is intended to be made in something like a rayon chalet that's really soft and drapey and has a lot of flow, that muslin is not gonna give you the same look as the chalet. So just something to be aware of in the muslining process. Fitting does take practice, it does take time, but in the end, you're gonna end up with garments that fit so good, things that you can never find in the store and are exactly what you want. I hope that these tips were helpful for you. If you wanna support the channel and this free content, please like and subscribe. Down in the show notes, you can check out my pattern shop or buy me a coffee. And if you wanna stay up to date on all my tips, tutorials, sewing patterns, etc., you can sign up for my newsletter. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments and happy sewing.